Today, we're celebrating the festival of St. Francis of Assisi. Now, I know to some it may seem odd, a Lutheran church, to take time to acknowledge and celebrate this great saint that so many identify as being part of that great Catholic tradition. However, I assure you that the saints hold a very special place in Lutherandom as well. A quick flip through Evangelical Lutheran worship, the current hymnal of the ELCA, will reveal 29 hymns that mention, reference, and celebrate the reality of saints within our midst. Also, we have no problems identifying St. Luke or St. Mark or St. John or St. Matthew or St. Peter or St. Paul, uh, any of those great names from the New Testament. I myself have served two different congregations that bear the name of St. Matthew. Beyond that, we acknowledge people like St. Stephen in Acts, the first martyr who was stoned to death for preaching. So why not include those other saints, like St. Francis from the 12th century? Or one of my favorite saints, St. Drogo, who is the patron saint of sheep, coffee, and the unattractive or as I would often tell confirmation students, the patron saint of high school dances. Included in our understanding of the saints are those saints that we see and interact with in our everyday lives, saints to us as people, saints in our communities, saints in a vernacular sense. For those of us here at Faith Lutheran Church, Pastor Dave Risch was a saint for oh so long in our community. For me personally, I remember Miss Coleman. She was my Sunday school teacher from second grade through sixth grade because I was a handful as a kid and I had her for second grade. And when I moved up to third grade, the third grade Sunday school teacher retired until I moved up to fourth. And so Miss Coleman signed up to be the Sunday school teacher of whatever class I was in from second grade through sixth. Truly a saint in every sense of the word. But today, as we remember St. Francis of Assisi, who loved creation and loved animals great and small, I'd like to take a moment to remember those other saints in our lives, the saints that we live with, that are our family members, that have four legs or two or fur or wings, those saints who are our pets. When I had first moved to Connecticut, I started dating this young woman who was an amazing person. But she had this dog that was even more amazing. The dog's name was Jazzy. Jazzy was one of the greatest dogs. Jazzy also loved nothing more than to play fetch. And it was on the occasion that I got to dog sit Jazzy that I learned that what I need in my life is an animal that will let me play fetch with it, throwing the ball and returning it endlessly. Well, sad to say that that relationship ended. And the saddest part of that was I didn't get to hang out with Jazzy anymore. So with Jazzy out of my life, I decided I am going to adopt a dog. I went on Pet Finder and all the different apps and was looking at all the pictures of all the dogs I could find when I came across a dog by the name of Socks. S-O-X. And in this picture, Socks was holding a tennis ball in his mouth. And I thought to myself, that... That is my dog. He has a ball in the picture. So I went to the adoption agency, met Socks. They handed me his leash and a tennis ball and let me take him out in the Finston area to meet and play with him. So we went out and I took his leash off and I threw the ball and he brought it back. And I threw the ball and he brought it back. And I threw the ball a third time and he brought it back. And I thought to myself, this is perfect. This is exactly what I want. This dog is great and this dog plays fetch. So I went back into the counter and said, I will take this one home. Little did I know that they have to run background checks and do all sorts of other things. And it was about a two week process, but that was a price worth paying. And so two weeks later, I went back to pick up Socks. They handed me the leash and Socks and I got into the Jeep. However, the thing that I had been thinking about for the past two weeks was that Socks was not that dog's name. Because Socks is the name of a dog who is all one color, whose paws are a different color. That is a dog that should be named Socks. And this dog was a beautifully colored Treen Walker Coonhound, white with beige and brown spots. He looked like a 45 to 50 pound beagle. Gorgeous. 
And so we were in my car and driving back to the house. And I looked at him and said, your name is not Socks. And the dog looked at me, bemused, but smiling and happy that he was on his way home. And I said, your name is Winston. And it stuck. And from that day on, he was Winston. So Winston and I got home. And I was so happy to have him there. I took off his leash and I let him walk around the house. He explored it for a while. And then I put on his leash, took him to the church next door that had a fenced in playground, took his leash off and I threw the ball and he brought it back. I threw it again and he brought it back. I threw it a third time and he brought it back. And then I threw it again and he just stopped, stood there and looked at me. It was in that moment I learned that Winston only returns the ball three times, and typically only twice a week. I never could get him to bring it back a fourth time. I don't know why he stopped at three, but that's where he stopped. It was one of the first lessons in patience that Winston taught me. The bigger thing that Winston taught me was the overwhelming sound of silence in the lack of the presence of something that you love. Not having children of my own, I can only assume that this is the kind of silence my mother would talk about those weeks in the summer growing up when my brother and I were both at summer camp and it was just her at home alone with my dad. And she would say the house is so eerily, eerily silent. When I took kids on mission trips, I would either board Winston or let other families look after him. Upon returning home, I would always get Winston the next day. Because by the time I drove back to the church and the kids got home and we dropped off the van, it would always be too late to pick him up. And so I would go home that night and walk in the door and be greeted not by the pitter-patter of paws and jangling of dog tags, but by utter silence. I never noticed how loud that silence was until Winston was there and then he left. I remember one mission trip. I returned home and got in pretty early on a Saturday. And so I had texted the family who was looking after Winston that week. I was in the kitchen and I heard the front door open. And I heard the pitter-patter of little paws. And I heard the jingling of his dog tags. And Winston came into the kitchen where I was and stood up on his hind legs, propping himself up on me with his front two paws as he was prone to do. And I was so excited to see him that I squatted down, much like a catcher in a baseball game. Winston took the opportunity, as dogs will, to lick as much as possible, with his paws on my shoulders, trying to lick my face any which way he could. Though he did manage to get through, and in a stroke of love, licked me right in the eye, which caught me off guard, which means I couldn't push him down. And in that moment, Winston climbed onto my knees, his two back paws on my two knees. He wrapped his arms around my head, almost like a headlock, and began licking the top of my head ferociously, yet ferociously with care and affection. He was so happy that I was there. He was so happy that we were there together. Again, after all that time. During this period of my life, I was teaching confirmation a lot, and one of the questions I would always ask the confirmation students would be to describe heaven, and to do so by describing a color without referencing any other color. Because to say, well, it's kind of like blue, I could merely respond to them, that then heaven is blue. It's kind of a, a thought exercise to point out the idea that heaven is beyond our grasp, beyond our understanding, and truly beyond any experience that we have. I love and believe in that lesson as a thought experiment. But if you ask me what I believe heaven is like, through ideas of St. Peter and wings and memories and that sort of thing, I always go back to that memory and the joy that it brings. Winston and I embraced, being the recipient of such unconditional love. Truly, the pets that we share our lives with are saints in every definition of that word. They are avatars 
of God's unconditional love and companionship and care and support for each and every one of us. We see this through the words of Scripture. We see the relationship that humanity has with animals in Genesis early on. And then in the story of Noah's flood, God says to Noah, get multiples of every animal because these are an important part of creation. There are more animals on the ark than people. Later in the Old Testament, we have the wonderful story of Balaam riding his donkey. And an angel keeps appearing in front of Balaam on his donkey, and the donkey can see it, not Balaam. And so the donkey turns to avoid the angel, each time with Balaam beating the donkey because he does not see what the donkey does. Until finally the donkey turns its head and starts to speak to Balaam. Have I not been a loyal donkey for so long? Why do you beat me now? The donkey could see what Balaam could not. The donkey was the one teaching the lesson. Or even consider the nativity in the second chapter of Luke, when the angels appear to the shepherds and their flock, and they speak to both of these, the shepherds and their flock. And so the shepherds and their flock are in a state of awe at the good news that for the entire world, a Savior is born. Today we are celebrating the festival of St. Francis of Assisi. We are intentionally celebrating the lives of those animals who we have lived with, that we have cared for, that they have cared for us, the ones who have taught us lessons, the ones that we have enjoyed God's creation here on earth with. In his book, The Undertaking, Thomas Lynch wrote that one of the greatest things about funerals and funeral customs is that we create a situation in which we can remember how we remember the people that we love. Dear friends, this is what I ask of you this day. Take a moment, light a candle, say a prayer, create a memory of how you remember the great saints that you have shared your life with. Saints with four legs or two. Saints with wings. Saints with fur and scales. The saints you have pet and cuddled and snuggled. The saints that you have given scraps to off the table. The saints that have left an impression in your heart. The size of their entire lives. May we remember them in our hearts and in our minds carrying all that they have taught us about unconditional love forward wherever our life's journeys may take us. Amen.